I remember thinking back to March of this year, 2023, when we saw all over the news. We witnessed the second largest bank failure in American history. Major development in the banking world. Not clear if they're going to get all of their money back. They just came out and told us that the bank is shut down. The FDIC just reported the California regulator shut down Silicon Valley Bank. SBB, the 16th largest bank in the U.S. with $175 billion in deposits, is now the biggest American bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. Silicon Valley Bank having trouble on having to potentially sell billions of dollars in securities at a loss in order to stay afloat and then suddenly a massive panic ensuing and many people withdrawing their money and eventually leading to SBB collapsing. What's interesting right now that is going on in this interesting landscape with higher rates and the Federal Reserve raising rates is we've got new loans coming into the market in all different sectors and these loan companies, these lenders, these financial institutions are making bets on whether they believe rates will continue to go up or they're eventually going to drop and they're dictating their rates based off of that. And if you're in the solar industry, I have a video to talk to you about today because this is really crucial information that might help you make better decisions going into finance products. Now, as we're over here, of course, the cat's out of the bag. Sunlight Financial has had a massive challenge that uh, they currently have over 500 million, a half a billion dollars in residential loans sitting on their books, as you can see here. And they are forced to potentially either sell them at a loss or continue to hold them, which of course they cannot hold for much longer. And this is something that, you know, I want to share with you guys today, especially if you guys are in the solar industry, it's something to keep an eye on because I saw over the last year as someone that watched about $150 million of solar loans come across my desk with the company that I was a part of. I watched this happen and I watched a lot of sales reps target Sunlight and different banks and whoever had the lowest dealer fee, whoever had the lowest um, annualized yields, whoever had the lowest APRs, whatever it is, they would target those banks. And what started to happen was, is they started hopping one bank to the another, and all of them would say, well, why do these major banks, I don't want to say names of banks, this is not about major banks, but you guys know who the big dogs are. Why does the good of the world, you guys know exactly who I'm talking about, why do they have higher dealer fees? Why do they have higher rates? It's a simple answer. They want to be able to sell their loans so they can fund more loans. And what Sunlight Financial did here, and there's not much dialogue in here, what they did is they essentially made a bet. They made a bet that they would keep their rates as low as they could because they didn't believe that the Fed would continue raising rates on the path that they're raising. Now, by the way, and if I were to jump over here to the CME Fed funds forecast and I were to load up their probabilities, you guys can see right now we are 88% chance that rates will remain the same in September of this year. We are at a 62% chance that they'll remain the same in November, but a 35% chance that they will actually increase Again, you can see again in, in December, 58% chance that they'll be here at the 525 to 550, 30% chance they'll be here. You can see those chances. We don't see the chances of rates going down between March and May of next year until March of May of next year. This is important information because if you're Sunlight Financial, you're holding on for dear life. You're getting close to the cusp and you're thinking to yourself, can I hold these long these loans any longer? I don't want to sell them at a loss. And the only way to sell them is if I do sell them at a loss because the buyers on the other end, Wall Street, they want a higher return. You see, some of these loans, they're at 7.5% is their annualized rate. 14% dealer fee. Of course, that's phenomenal. But they can't sell it. Now they're at the risk of going out of business. It's a lot like SVB. They said, man... We're going to give, 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 give. We're going to have all these securities. We're going to buy, 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 buy all of these long-term bonds. Three years, four years, five years. We're going to buy them at 2%. And then suddenly that was their bet. And they were betting that the rates wouldn't go up. And that was their bet. Rates went up. And now guess what? They're yielding their own money 2%. Yet they're supposed to give their clients 4%, 5%. They're losing money. That's what SVB, that's what happened to SVB in short. Very simplified version. 
And so this is interesting, not if you're in solar, but if you're anybody to look at things like this, Sunlight Financial. As a trader here, come over here to Sunlight Financial, S-U-N-L, the ticker symbol. Look at their stock getting shorted and shorted and shorted. Here we are in a daily time frame where you can see here is a marginal high at the end of July. We've gone from 62 cents to 17 cents. You can continue to go back. Sunlight Financial back in 2021 was trading at over $16.50 a share. We're currently trading at 16 cents. Your money vaporized. That's why it's always so crucial, especially if you're in the solar industry, to be thinking about who you're doing business with. How have they structured themselves? How are their books structured? So to wrap this up, guys, I hope you understand the severity of this situation. Now, it's not about sunlight and it's not pegging them. You have to start thinking, what other financial institutions have I been dealing with that have had phenomenal rates and everybody's running to their low rates? Ask yourself a question. Will they be able to sell those loans? Will they be able to pass on that paper, if you will? Because the big dogs, the reason their rates are higher is because they are securing themselves in a market where they are unsure if rates will continue to go higher. That's why their rates are so much higher. They're saying, look, they might continue to go higher. So we have to be ready for that because we don't want to be in a scenario where you do all this business. We have to sell all these loans and now we can't. And now we can't service you long term because we made a bet that the Fed would decrease rates earlier than they actually do. And you just saw, we don't even see that in the cards at all until at least March to May of next year. Might be interesting information to think about, guys. So I hope that these sort of videos bring you a ton of value. As always, guys, if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers. And of course, click that like button if you got some information out of this video. And we'll see all of you guys on the next video.